Diese Konferenz wird nun aufgezeichnet. Good day, everyone. Uh, this is Bernhard Heuvel speaking. I'm from Germany and I'm a professional beekeeper and also I'm the president of the Professional Beekeepers of Europe, the European Professional Beekeepers Association, EPBA. And I prepared the results and the summary from the last weekend where we had uh, two conferences and meetings. Um, the one conference was meetings of scientists who talked about the DNA analysis uh, of the honey. So I just uh, put up the pictures here, or the slides for you. Okay, this is the topic, DNA analysis, especially for honey, yeah, to honey authentication. So to see if it's fake honey or real honey. And in Friedrichshafen in Germany, last weekend, we had these two conferences where um, scientists met and uh, also the public and the uh, the beekeepers from all over the place and uh, this was the, the question that we were talking about what can the dna method do what other methods cannot do and it's pretty easy to answer as experts there were three professors uh, talk, talking about the topic and this is one of professor is dr maria anastasiadi from uh, england Grenfell university and she was talking about uh, one sort of uh, DNA method, uh, DNA barcoding and meta barcoding. She used that uh, method to detect syrup in honey. And she did it by using markers and finding markers for different kinds of syrups like rice syrup or corn syrup. And she was able to find those markers. And um, after, some t after some experiments, she was able to detect um, syrup in honey even by one percent of uh, yeah it's like one percent syrup in honey so that was a really nice talk it also showed the capability of this one uh, yeah, according uh, DNA method the second professor was my doctor, uh, professor Michael Trogott and he is an expert from Austria from Innsbruck University and he is in uh, like 25 years of experience in uh, in this field and in environmental dna screening and uh, also yeah involved in certification of different um, levels on the eu in austria so he was very very kind to introduce us into the dna world and showed everything uh what's uh, what's needed for DNA testing, how the DNA testing goes from the technique side here. And also he showed um, the difference between metagenomics, which is also called the shotgun sequencing, and uh, metabarcoding. So as I introduced you, the metabarcoding is, uh, uh, this is a method that uh, Professor Maria Anasagliari was using and um, you were looking at markers there if they are present then there is uh, some adulteration so if you find some rice um syrup dna in the honey this is most probably um yeah adulterated um the other method is, this is number one here is metagenomics and the difference is that you don't um that you don't look at specific markers you look at all DNA that is present in the honey. And for this uh, last method, um, there were two scientists present. It's, uh, Mar ah, it's like Kairi um, Reime from Estonia and Karel Kruskov from Estonian lab that are doing um, DNA testing in medical um, appliance. Also, they <laughs> Sorry, do the DNA testing in medics. For before the babies are born, they are testing for genetic diseases, and this is a field that has to be very robust, solid science to be done. So you don't um, produce any false negatives or false positives, because that would be uh, horrendous outcomes if they fail to do real, real, really good DNA testing. 
So they presented um, the DNA analysis. DNA um, testing is uh, the golden standard right now. There's nothing new, there's nothing, no revolution. It's a standard in medicine, in forensics, or for example, a popular example, but uh, COVID-19, where a lot of DNA testing was done um, with PCR tests. It also is introduced in food inspection and used by, by identifying fish or fraud in olive oil. So it is just a matter of time when DNA analysis is a gold standard in honey authenticity testing as well. It is yeah a matter of time and not the question if, if or if not. What you do nowadays, especially in medicine, you don't uh, look at markers anymore. Um, you look always look in the of, to the full picture, because when you're doing the barcoding, you're looking for specific markers here on the lower left uh, right side, sorry, lower right side, and you find these markers here in this spot. This was done mostly because in former times there was a little not recognized on but computing power <laughs> didn't translate that one so this is uh, there was too little um, computing power in the past and this is why you targeted um, only this you know, sequences here because um, you didn't have the power to do so um, nowadays it's a complete different uh, because you have a lot of computing power you got it artificial artificial intelligence, you got the machine learning, you always do the full DNA analysis in medicine. And that has a reason, because when you do the spotlighting, looking, searching for the markers, you, you maybe find them here, but uh, for many genetic diseases, you, um, you don't, know, don't uh, have only those diseases sitting on those genes here, but also sitting here or there. And if you look in here only, and you don't find anything, but this here are affected on this other side, you um, do false positives and false negatives. And this is uh, yeah not acceptable anymore in the world of medicine. So with all the computing power, you nowadays look at the whole picture and you see everything and you don't miss anything. And this is what has been done by the Estonian laboratory for a long time and they're certified, accredited, and validated for, for doing so in the medicine world. And what they did then, um, first, they, the first studies were about the composition of honey and not the authenticity. So this is what they published and what is published. And yeah, but uh, they then proceeded to use this full picture DNA bulk sequencing to um, use it for authenticity tests and this worked pretty well so this is a two differences um maybe more dna uh, methods but uh, this is also main two one is a targeted looking for markers and the other one is um, doing the full sequences which could involve 20, 10 to 20 million sequences but also 400 uh, million sequences it doesn't matter the computers do it and um, they sequence the DNA and um, specify the species behind so every living form um, you know, leaves its traces in DNA and can be identified in the honey. And there's a lot that can be identified. The advantage here is for the bulk sequencing is that you don't need a huge database because you always see the full picture and you can make a signature um, like a print, a footprint or how, how to call it, I don't know, a QR code from the whole picture. And um, here um, you need huge databases and huge numbers of samples to see all the markers and find all the markers. This is more specific looking and this is an overall looking um, way to look at the DNA. And the, the bulk sequencing uh, just doesn't have to need uh, such a huge number of samples in the database to learn um, what is real honey, what's not real honey. Also, the full picture assures that 
nothing will be off. So it, um, nothing will be filtered out. So you see everything and you produce less uh, false negatives and false positive, if at all. So yeah, this is why it's a state of the art right now in the medicine. And this is why it will be the state of the art pretty soon uh, in the uh, world of how honey authenticity tests and also in foot inspection. Yeah, uh, no doubt. And we are in the middle of the process of uh, doing the accreditation and validation. It will be ready in next year, lately. Uh, so we got an ISO norm also. So you better find new arguments uh, against the DNA testing because uh, all the arguments about the database and number of samples in the database and also the validation will be very solved very soon and then you got no excuses anymore to um, deny um, the DNA testing. What is honey DNA made of? Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of species from everything that is living in the world. <laughs> uh, microbiome, viruses, honeybee pathogens, honeybees, humans, animals, insects, all sorts of other insects. Um, fungi and plants and everything. It's um, amazing what kind of species is there in uh, honey. And if you want to look at such an amazing picture and uh, chart here, just um, yeah, look behind this QR code here and you get an example what's all in the all in the such as um, a honey sample or what you can find there this one is interactive as you call it so you can click in it and you can click the bacteria and go down and down and down and down right until the species there um, which is leaving the traces from the dna but what can be seen there's all sorts of colors here showing the yeah you know, the, the groups and the families of all those living things and the composition is always the same and if you mix and muddle it up um, things will change like this gray area when you're putting in uh, more and more syrup or something else this gray area um, yeah it's growing significantly and also it was argumented a lot about the origin of honeys of the origin of the samples that are introduced into the database and that are used to make um, like profile of the real honey that uh, there are different plants in a different part of the world yeah there are different part plants and species in different parts of the world okay it's also the same with the microbiome or other animals and so on but the composition is almost the same so you got the red and you got the green and the blue and the composition is always the same because the honeybees produce honey the same way all over the world they fly out get their nectar from the plants and they have their own microbiome and they uh, have their own pathogens and uh, their own beekeepers <laughs> that are caring for the bees. So they all are present in this corona, in this corona chart here. And they all have this, all honeys have almost the same composition. And we are talking about nuances when it comes to different countries. You will see it in the next picture. Um, because all the samples of authentic samples of honey are creating some sort of galaxy. So these little green dots are actually um, the samples of real authentic honey there. And they're forming a three dimensional um, space like a galaxy with a lot of stars in it. And the galaxy, of course, has a boundary, some sort of. It's not a fixed boundary. But more or less, uh, yeah, a spectrum uh, like a, yeah, I don't know how to how to, <laughs> to uh, call it in English, but uh, it's there's a lot of space. There's no fixed boundary here. And when you're adding in more and more examples from all over the world, it doesn't say that uh, like uh, Southern American honey is going be out of the galaxy of real honey, but inside but maybe on the corner, but or even more in the center, that doesn't matter. The authentic honeys have all the same profiles and are in, within the same galaxy. So this is one database that we put up. And this database here, um, yeah, it says forms their own galaxy. 
and he was really really we really really took care that uh, they are real authentic honeys and this is why we took only honeys into the database they were collected by professional beekeepers in professional beekeeping as uh, operations and also yeah from real honeybees <laughs> so yes this is a galaxy of uh, the real honeys um, we also have another database show with syrups and also with the fake honey and you don't you only see those four dots but it forms another galaxy far 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 away from the real authentic honey galaxy so it's a way out of there and um, you see those four samples here and they yeah, form a, an own galaxy and you clearly very clearly can distinguish between adulterated honey a fake honey syrups and also and real authentic honey with no adulteration at all that is a black and white picture there's no question about it so um this here this those stars here and also those stars going into the galaxy of honey those were the german samples that i personally brought to estonia and we were tested and this is those stars belong to the galaxy here the, of the fake honey and uh, as you see this is very clearly out of the galaxy of honey in in the galaxy of fake and adulterated honey so there's no doubt that uh, lots of them are really really fake honey and those golden star here in the center of the galaxy of the honey this is the control honey that i got from a neighbor a beekeeper and uh, use as a control and you, i already told you all those were all blind tested so the laboratory would not know which honey is which and which sample is which so uh, it was a good control and the control right went right to the center of the honey universe and the honey honey galaxy i would say so and there are of course there are four um, for samples here that also passed two of them were out of question they are right in the middle of the honey galaxy there's not a problem with them but two others were not so clear and for those cases here you see that one here on the boundary of the galaxy if those cases are on the boundary or even far out of the boundary like a little bit more out um, those cases are um i've have i've been controlled by experts um on dna and authentic honey so those are the cases when the artificial intelligence does not decide what's what's honey or not but uh, the humans do so an expert of honey authenticity looks with different methods with different markers if it's real honey or not and even if it's a little bit out like fast stretched out out of the honey galaxy it can be included but yeah if there were comments on those samples here but usually you've got a black and white picture a clear decision what is fake what is adulterated and what's real honey so even if you put more and more samples numbers of real honey in the within the database so the database got the huge numbers of samples 28,000 or more it doesn't matter because they all belong to the same galaxy and they won't go out like here to the fake honey galaxy this is too far away from the truth so yeah we are waiting uh, until it's all be accredited and then you yeah we'll see and we then we use this officially to show what's adulterated or not on the market yeah those are those stars here they are numbers and scores and this are those, those are the scores from our from our honey set that i brought from germany and as you clearly see there's the whole range of spectrum with uh, real honey um, being in the center and also the four different methods can be seen so only if more than two of the methods fail they will be um yeah identified as non-authentic honey those were the results here from germany 
So we got uh, 30 samples, all blind tested. So the laboratory did not know what it is and which honey is which. And only five of them passed. Um, one passed without doubt, two others passed clearly. And so we're not so sure. And this is what is the number of 80% of the, all the samples it came from uh, in the media. But uh, we got a lot of other honeys tested right now. And I want to assure you when you go back here in this database, it's not just uh, Estonian and German honey, but also most of the European countries already, like Austria, like Sweden or England or whatever, and also from other continents. So this is growing intercontinentally from South America, from Turkey, it's coming as uh, samples, real samples, authentic samples from China and also from everywhere else. I don't know. It's international already and will be very international soon. So we have no doubts about our results. So, yeah, and we got a lot of uh, samples that we took in uh, Finland. Uh, I don't remember right, but it was 56 samples and 60% of it failed. And uh, only the rest was or a little bit more, that like 62% of it failed. And yes, all the rest was real honey. Um, even worse, a lot, a lot worse, it was in, uh, in the UK, um, where five authentic uh, honeys were introduced. Again, I tested the laboratory easily could distinguish, oh, they are in, within our honey galaxy. We found them, no problem. One from the supermarket shelves was found to be true honey. One of the all the 30 samples or like 35, 25 samples, one failed. Uh, one was passed as an authentic honey and all the others were faked. So we got more than 90% of the supermarket honeys faked and adulterated. Austria, a completely different picture. We also asked there for five authentic honeys and the authentic honeys again were easily identified identified by um, the dna test or the dna method and, and you see that all the others all the other from the supermarket to like 100 percent of all the samples that we took in uh, austria failed so the picture is getting bigger and bigger we are collecting more and more samples from all over europe and from all over the world and we have them soon in our database. And then we talk about the big picture. And yeah, keep on buying samples, keep on sending in samples from supermarkets. There's a lot of denial because it's like unbelievable and shocking, the results. But yeah, if you look at the other side, the big picture, and we did some tremendous work and uh, pretended to be honey traders and bought fake honey from all over the world, but mainly from the Asian market and also in, in within Europe. And uh, you may take a photograph of this QR code here and look at the video about us getting offers and also talking to the sellers of the fake honey. And you will find that there uh, are like telling us, oh, the consumer, or not the consumer, the, ah, the packers or whatever that is, the traders, the, the customers, sorry, the customers, they say, their customers in Europe, they mix like 10% real honey with 90%, 90% of synthetic fake honey. So this is a mixture they, they uh, more or less say it's fine and they won't be tested by the laboratories in Europe or won't be detected by the laboratories in Europe as fake honey and adulterated honey. Look at the look at the video, it's self-explaining. It also widens your picture and widens what's going on on the market. Um, you clearly can see uh, what's going on. I know and I mean, we as beekeepers know what we are talking about, and we we see this clearly. But um, most people cannot believe the amount of adulteration that is done on the honey market. 
Yeah. So this little video here may open your eyes a little bit more about the bigger picture and those piece of puzzle uh, fits of the DNA method or the DNA results fits nicely into this picture. So yeah, it's just uh, evidence for that what we already know. Yeah, this is uh, the time to make a public call to all the supermarket chains which exist in Germany, especially um, reach out to us, please. Guys, it's it's a sad situation and we need to get all in the honey industry uh, at one table and fix this problem. And you as supermarket chains are really, really asked to join us and, and meet and talk to us and look at yourself into the DNA method and the results that it produces. Please, please, please do something. Don't ignore it. Don't think that it will go away. This is not a scandal that will fade out a little. It won't. It won't. We keep on tracking it. We wrote letters to you like in July this year, which is months ago. I wrote second letter. No reaction at all. And this is not acceptable. Please do something. We got a positive examples from the international uh, supermarket chains like the Sock Group in Scandinavia. We were meeting in Helsinki and we were talking about the DNA method, about the results, what's going on, on the honey market. And they were really nice, really interested in what we are doing and really, really wanted to learn what's going on and really wanted to help us to get the syrup, or the honey labeled syrup from out of the shelves. And this is what they did and they do. You can do here in uh, Germany too. And also we do the public call to all honey traders and packers. I mean, the honey traders may or may not know what they are selling, but by the prices you can tell. But yeah, but the first traders start to ask the laboratories, uh, the laboratory in Estonia to do the DNA test on their, on their honey that they, they sell and they buy. And also the packers can do this. So, Look into the DNA method, put up your own DNA laboratory, whatever, but reach out to us, speak to us, talk to us, meet with us, do something and be part of the solution and not part of the problem, please. We want to get all the honey industry and all market participants on one table and we want to solve the issue of honey alteration, especially the amount that is a huge scandalous unbelievable amount of adulteration and faking that has to be stopped because beekeepers are so and so some don't don't like to talk about it but most are happy that there are there's no something going on and there's maybe a solution in the futures we didn't talk to the traders yet uh, just to one whistleblower who retired and was very willing to tell us about some details and also about his opinion what's going on which was very insightful and helped us to get a picture we already talked to about import talked to importers and uh, associations of the importers which were not as um how's it called confrontative confrontative as it sounded in the public because they got their own problems uh, the amount of consumption dropped by 20 percent is at least in germany and also the prices dropped significantly so there's no money anymore to do in the honey market for even some packers so yeah they are affected and they may in the public um, deny go into denial of the dna method but yeah maybe they will find it later that it, it helps them <laughs> we can trade and import real honey and not uh, syrup for honey Okay, so we talked to them. Beekeeper associations are internationally joining up. We form a new beekeeping guild. So the national professional beekeeping associations are um, meeting up each other and also the Pimondia is joining. And so there's a lot going on on international and national level. The German uh, 
hobbyist peak immune association may join in too we did not talk to the packers yet but just because of the time not now for the willing but we will do this soon um yeah um internationally we are up to the supermarket change and they started talking to us on the national level in germany at least there's wasn't not so much but maybe in the f near future i hope so because otherwise we are start um we are start naming names because at one day we have to go full public with the results and uh, because we are willing to talk at the table like grown adults with each other and solve the problem but if you keep on ignoring us we have to unfortunately do the same we are already talking to consumers and media when the consumers are really really supporting us even by donating to the save the honey and clean up the honey market clean up the honey market um, um, projects so they are the consumers is are really up to they want real honey they want to save the real honey and that is what we experience as beekeepers and it's um yeah very heartwarming i must say because we are so proud of our honey and uh, the consumers are really like it as a raw and natural fresh product from nature and not from industry and the media is joining and helping a lot of uh, to spread the message and to get all the market participants at the one table so this is it the question from the beginning what can the dna message do what others message cannot do is clearly to be answered it's pretty easy the dna analysis detects adulteration that other methods don't even see I don't say we need only dna analysis and methods bug sequencing whatever i say it's one that sees what other cannot see anymore because they can the fraudsters can copy the real honey with their synthetic honey really 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 good and uh, it's also not said that we don't need the old methods anymore that's not said as i showed you we have like boundaries and in the middle but there are a few samples that are falling within this range but then we need the other methods and also it's always good to have more tools in your toolbox to solve problems than just one. We want another tool to be added to this toolbox, and this is a DNA analysis. Uh, so stop ignoring it, use it, and clean up the honey market, and also save the real honey. For the tremendous work from the German professional um, Beekeeper Association and also from the European Professional Beekeeper Association. We were given to the two um, scientists a prize and uh, it's they were really, really help for for us as a beekeeping community. They were help to our beekeepers, families and also for the honeybees and also for the consumers. Their work is groundbreaking and will change the world of honey for sure the one day the other so we are yeah we are really really thank thank them for their work which was outstanding with those words i finish this uh, presentation i'd like to thank you all for listening to this small um yeah out call for everyone i really wish you a good day a good life with a lot of love and energy and real honey. Best to you all.